Hey guys, today we try a new stream. Um, just got a little bit of stuff to play with, and uh, I really wanted to uh, tie my first streamers with these uh, double fin tails. And I uh, haven't tried them yet, and uh, just in the opening now of the pike season, I would love to uh, to test them. So um, I'll tie myself a perch pattern with the red tail and a bait fish pattern with the uh, white pearl tail. And I uh, thought while I'm doing that, I'll just uh, you can join me. I want to tie two different flies. Um, so it will be like uh, two different episodes, um, kind of the same fly but uh, different styles of movement. Um, so we tie that fly on a on an Arex hook. This is the uh, TP six hundred ten, and we want to tie it once with a with a dumbbell eye, so we get a little bit of jig action. And the other fly we'll tie with the uh, foam body inside. So. Um, we have the really slow descending, just uh, in mid-water hoover, hovering fly and uh, just to, to have two different kind of movements in your fly. So we can start with this one, I want to tie it articulated, so I got me a few shanks, I got the 35mm uh, package here, I got the 20mm uh, here and I got a few 10mm shanks here as well. where. Uh, Put the fast, oh, not a fast attach, but a, the fast clip for the uh, tail in. And uh, these all we will tie on a hook. And uh, we'll start with the uh, with the floating one, or like hovering one. So to uh, to achieve that, we uh, take all our materials and just put it on the hook. All the shanks and the tail as well because uh, the Paolo tails are a little bit uh, floating and then we take our foam hat and all that we just dip into water and we see I hope you can see that but it's just floating on the surface so this hat is too big and then we just cut a bit off like that. Now we can just try it again. I really hope you can see that. So chuck it into the glass again. And now it just stays close underneath the uh, water surface. So just swimming in mid-air. It's, it's underneath the water. So the water is level here. And it's not going down or up, that's perfect. As we also put a little bit lead on the shanks later um, for the movement. Okay. And then we uh, can start tying our fly. So, of course, we uh, start with a little 10 millimeter shank. Just grab a little towel to get everything dry. And then we Take a little bit of the uh, Gulf Minute Man just to get a base on our our thread. So we can start with a few thread wraps now here. Just close that shank and then cut the thread off. I like to uh, put the tail in already, so I can get it a little bit out of the way because as we can put the tail here I can use a clamp to uh, to get it just aside and we really keep this pattern simple the uh, tail will just do a tiny bit of uh, of chenille And a tiny bit of lead here. 
not much just a bit to gain a little bit of weight why we do that is because when we toy an articulated an articulated streamer you have to have a little bit of mass in the back which is pushing from behind against the fly um, so the tail is kind of pushing the fly forward and this gives us these, uh, this fishy move, movement so this uh, slingering from side to side so that's why we really want to have on each shank at least a little bit of weight just secured with a bit of more super glue and then we just wrap that around Just tie it down. <coughs> Perfect. And then we uh, take some of the fly fur. You can use uh, any craft fur you want. Just make sure it's. Uh, Maybe we use more like some tan color for the uh, for the for the tail. We just cut out a good amount. We'll get a really thin when we brush it out. But uh, the fly fur or the excess select craft fur uh, do have quite nice, decent long hairs, and we want to go to uh, around the. Uh, mid of the uh, of the tail so we grab it with the other hand cut it off here and do it on the table otherwise that's a big mess so I did it a little bit longer because I want to tie it in reverse it's not really necessary to do that for the tail but it's easier to distribute it around the hook then I think in and you can just take a push tool if you want to or use your fingers secure that with a lot of super glue it gets a little bit bulky on the shank because of the uh, the lead wire never mind so I'll make sure this one here is free mm. what we do then is we take the next shank Just get it in there. Perfect. The same procedure, just get the tail out of the way and put a little bit of super glue on the shank here. Not too much. Just close it down. Just go over it with the thread to secure it. You can use a little bit of super glue if you want. Just tie it in. Around it. 
little bit of the ripple eyes fiber here. This is a sand color. again. Take a little bit smaller amount. This time I'm going to go around here. Just realign the tips. We tie it in reverse as well, just using a small amount because now we tie a different color on the belly and the back of the fly to get the uh, darker back already. fingers while tying it in and it's not sliding around the, uh, the hook shank and stays on the top and the bottom. When we tie it back we just fold it around with a uh, point finger and thumb so we cover the uh, whole shank also on the sides. Make two wraps and do the same thing with the belly. So check if everything is in place and then we tighten it and give it a few strong wraps. Just close it. One simple knot will do as we secure all that stuff with some super glue. So we go to our last chunk. It's a 35 millimeter. Just slide it in. getting a really really big fly only because we're using three shanks. Um, we tie this one here onto the hook so this one will be maybe like that and uh, but it, it will get a lot of movement which uh, I really like. So next shank same procedure a little bit of super glue the shank take a bit of a let here fix it in the beginning because now we have the possibility to close this gap here with the lat a little bit. And 
that. So it's not going to uh, tail into our, our hook later. So I'll just give it a few loose wraps. And then we secure it with a little bit of super glue. this step again with the um, polar reflector flash really one of my most loved materials for fly tying is uh, you can cover quite a huge space really quickly keep the uh, volume in the fly up and keep it light so we just go to this point here where the uh, shank is closing. And then just tie it off. I can leave the thread on. Doesn't really matter. Just lay that aside. And now we are um, getting our Eric Sooks. It's uh, as I said before, TP610, size 40. A really wide hook gap. Really nice for uh, for pike fishing. Not that heavy wired here, so you can build up a nice nice head as you want to do it, but really stable and really sharp as well. So we will place this one in here like that. And for that we just get some super glue on the shank. And then we and then we place the shank we used before with the thread attached still onto the hook with the uh, wet super glue. And we'll just give it a few slight turns to get it into position, and then just tighten it. still have our chenille here. Just go underneath once. Down. Cut it off. Now we can get that stuff out of place again. And now we have to uh, see what we do. But I really like to uh, sometimes use these knife brushes. Um, this one here is an olive knife brush. Um, where we start with the uh, the Naya brush just to finish off the uh, the shank as we have a little gap here of the uh, the shank you can also uh, cut it off with some pliers but it's not really necessary well, Naya is a really great material for getting your wings and stuff like that done so just Now we get, of course, an overall olive body from on the top and the belly. But as we put on the uh, on the front where the gills are, anyway, another layer of uh, light material on the belly. Uh, it will just blend with it and. Uh, will look quite cool hopefully. So give that a few turns around the hook shank and then we 
tie it off. a little bit up and um, then we finish the head with some monster stuff. So the popper head is tightened now with some super glue and then we start the thread again and uh, we just tie in our knot on the belly side. Take the olive knot for the top, really, really nice product to try with. Just tie it on the upper side on that. I really don't know which uh, which hats that are that I'm using here for for the uh, fly, but uh, it's really nice that they are cut straight, as this really keeps my hook gap wide open, so I won't have a problem with uh, hooking any fish. Let me do the same thing with the. Uh, it on the belly side. Just try to get a grip onto it. Quite slippery here around the popper head. But now we won the battle. So I'm definitely going to secure this with a little bit of super glue here. And then we brush that out just a bit. can still see the popper head through it, but it's not really a problem as we, as I said, put the dubbing head here and this will go around until this length and then the popper head will be closed. Um, what we can do now is put a little bit of, uh, of, of sparkle into the fly. Um, I really love this Hedron, um, Hedron Pearl. Uh, polar flesh in, uh, in, in pearl or, or, or pearl color is it? As it just works with every color of material you tie. So it's actually not really necessary to buy more than one color of flesh. We'll just take a bit and tie it just onto the uh, onto the uh, knot. I always make sure that I tie it on top of the knot again because then it really lays into the knot. If I would tie it in front of it, it will stand up and uh, it would not go really properly into the material. So just make sure you tie it on the same spot where you tied the knot in. It makes the cone here a little bit thicker, but it's not really a problem. And then we Use a little bit of our sand-colored ripple ice fiber. Just 
just a few wraps, not too much. And then we check for the olive one, which is here. Just gives it a little bit of extra bling. Just return it and tighten it. As the hook is so long and you have a really not the best hold to the to the hook shank because of the popper head here, the thread wraps are still tight but not as tight as I'm I'm used to tie them, so I'm securing these steps a little bit more with some super glue. So now we've got this nice push silhouette. Looks really cool, I think. And uh, now we go to my monster tub and we check for some olive. There's a little bit of olive left and now we can see if we do, uh, yeah, we do take some bait fish belly, it's just a mixture of white, brownish, yellowish colors, but really nice material. Some flesh already worked into it. And then we just go for the belly side and tie it down. What I like most about this dubbing head is that you really hide your thread while brushing the, the dubbing back. So it looks, the, the finish of the fly looks really clean and uh, nicely. Make sure that you're not using too much as it's a really thin material to have some air bubbles underwater if you would make it really really bulky. The fly would probably float in the beginning, which is not what we want to do. So you just have to take the right amount, which is uh, hardly to nothing. So I think with the package I probably could tie 20-25 flies at least. Sorry for the noise of my bobbin. So we tighten the dubbin and we put some super glue just on the thread. It's the best thing you can do because you don't touch the material anywhere and you can uh, apply the glue really onto the point. So I'm just having it here in the middle, just on the thread. Sorry for the bobbin again, I have to uh, put some grease in it. You can if it does it, you can just slide it between your nose and then it's no, usually it's fine again then but oh, better so the dubbing is tied in and we just brush it out brush it back give it a really nice and stable head. So we mix the epoxy and uh, I like to uh, use my eyes suiting the tail color. These are new smart Lose eyes. Uh, really cool red epoxy glow in the dark eyes. I think it's uh, 20 pieces in it. That's nice. And all different sizes. So let's get some out here. And then we Take our epoxy that we mixed up and we really work it into the material. So this hat will get really, really durable. Um, because we have the popper hat in here, we want the hat really, really flat. So the uh, water is pushing along the fly straight into the, uh, the hat. Of the uh, of the popper, which is making the fly jerking from left to right, and then the weight of the uh, of the shanks with a little bit of lead will just move forward, and the the fly is supposed to just 
move along like a real real fish. I'll try to show you that maybe in the water later. Um, park season, as I said, opens up uh, in tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll just take my GoPro on the water and uh, show you how it moved. One eye and the second eye. And then I'm sorry, but I'll take it out of the vise then just to see if everything is in place. So now we just let it dry a bit and then we fix here the upper bit with some gold UV glue. But uh, just give it a short rest. So the epoxy is nearly cured now. So uh, we can keep on working now and just take a little bit of the uh, Gulf Classic, the last Gulf I have, and I'll gently just move it in with the fingers just in the belly part, just to get it a little bit more stable here. Just let you give yourself some time to do it so it looks better and then we can just cure it. That looks really good. And the same thing we do with the uh, with the back of course. Also nearly empty. <laughs> Fat man gone, thin man gone, flex man gone. So that's the last bit I have here. Just put just some amount in here and then we just work it in with the finger. I'm afraid of the material. It was way better to do it with the finger than with the dubbing needle. Just uh, so way more precisely. And we can just adjust it how we want it. Cure it. And there's one thing left to do, and that's striping. There's no perch pattern with some proper stripes in it. So we just grab it gently, two fingers, and just pushing the marker onto the fly. You can spray it as well with a adding spray. Works really well. But uh, for the video, I'm just doing it now with some uh, marker. Just make sure you're not painting it, but you're just tapping the color onto the fly. That gives you the possibility to uh, get clean stripes and make sure that you hold on to the material and that you hold it tight. So you pull it away from the hook so it's under tension and then you can really nicely put some stripes on there. And we do the same on the top so we see where the stripes are on the other side. And we turn the fly. And now we have a finished perch fly, which is uh, articulated, not descending, not floating, just hovering in uh, midwater, just where you want it. That can be really, really effective. Thanks for watching.